It's about 30 minutes till sunrise. I just couldn't pass this opportunity to photograph the seagulls and other water birds. Or I guess they are not seagulls, but common gulls and uh, herring gulls, at least mainly, over here in the lakeside with the morning sunlight. I'm not a morning person at all myself. This is really hard for me. And it's freezing. But the gulls over there, they are kind of cautious of my presence. They are not, uh, what you say, they are not really used to people. They are very careful. So that is why I needed to come here before sunrise. And my main goal is to try to capture it. It's, they are too far away to get a good still photo of the breath, you know, coming from the the mouth of the bird. But if I'm lucky, I might be able to get a glimpse of that on video. So we'll see. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed that that will happen and and hopefully the sky is clear enough for some backlit photographs. That would be so great. But we'll just have to wish. Keep our fingers crossed and wish for that. But anyway, I'm gonna turn off the light and let's see what happens. Woodpecker. The soundscape right now is amazing. I got to see the whoopers one, and I think I nailed the shot that I was looking for. There was no backlight because the sun is still behind the clouds, but I think I got the breath shot of the homongal shouting to the air, and then the uh, mist or whatever you should call that just came out of uh, its mouth uh, it looked fabulous i even heard the i'm not sure what the name is in english but i'm sure to know it after i've edited this video but in finnish it's called gallus hypera i think it's part of the heron family uh not sure really sure but uh it is brown bird likes to go in in like on the shoreline uh, has long legs and the sound that it makes is this bassy sounds like blowing into a bottle you know a little glass bottle but very bassy mm. Mm. kind of but blowing sound it came far far away but I heard it I'm not really sure if the microphone captured it but great morning
I'm sitting over here and observing this nature that's opening right in front of me, I started to think about all these birds, all these sounds that are coming all around me, and how the lifespan of these creatures, these living things, is a lot shorter than the life of a human, normally. A gala might live, if, if it's really lucky, it might live maybe 15 years, maybe 20 if it's record-making, but most likely these gulls have a lifespan of, I don't know, maybe 5 years or something, 6 years, 7 years, 10 years. And I find myself thinking a lot about death. A lot of times, uh, my own and also death of other people and animals as well. And it's somehow strange that even even though death is it's a very scary thing and uh, but you know when when you when I sit here and observe these animals while they are just starting to and, and preparing for I mean you know the s summer is very important for these animals because they have to nest and they have to reproduce and 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 it's it's very tough uh, i don't know the name in english once again but these two birds are kind of like mating over there they are having some rituals and they are trying to invade that uh bird box on the tree but then there is this one bigger bird which is kind of like Hey, no, that that's mine. That's mine. I'm just waiting for my fiance. It's kind of it's kind of funny, but anyway, uh, these things have no idea. They are not thinking that hey, my life is short, and uh, it could end on any moment. Everything just is very still and very beautiful. But but still, I find myself thinking about these things a lot, and there's a lot of dangers in nature, and there's a lot of dangers in 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 life in general, and I, and I kind of find it funny how we tend to as as people and human beings we tend to think about nature as this one thing, and then the human life as another thing, and 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 kind of like those would be a separate thing, even though. I believe that life and nature, they belong together. They are basically one and same. But it's just, it's easy to think about them as a se like separate things. Human life and then nature, even though human is part of nature as well. But I don't know, and there's really no point, point here, but uh, I'm not making any kind of point here, but... I'm just thinking about, you know, how how nature is beautiful and, you know, li life can be beautiful as well. It can be not so beautiful as well, but uh, even though it's it's dangerous, it's scary sometimes, but <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, there's no point, but still. Now, the light is amazing right now. We have the sunlight coming. It's it's uh, not really high up, but pretty high already. And uh, it's giving some really nice backlight to the birds. But there's really not much happening right now. So I'm not sure if I'm going to stick around any much longer. As I wrap over here, I thought... Maybe some of you might be interested to see what my setup is. So here is the Sony a7 III, which is my main camera. 
at the moment. Uh, then there is the Sigma MC11 adapter for adapting uh, Canon EF lenses. In this case, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter sports lens to the Sony system. And then there's the lens itself, there's the uh, lens coat on it. And here somebody might be wondering why do I always have the small rig, small rig cage over here on the camera body, even if I'm taking stills. Well, it's pretty lightweight and a lot of times I take stills and video the same time, kind of like uh, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag, so I don't really know when I need this, so that's why I usually just have it on because it has these extra cold shoes and all these holes where you can put different things. A lot of times I put the monitor over here so that I have this one free and uh, yeah, it just gives me a lot of options and it also gives an extra uh, cover, you know, safety for, you know, any hits that might come to the camera body. So I like it, I use it a lot. And then there's the external monitor. It's not very huge, but it's really good for my uh, purposes because I like to do a lot of video and it really helps me a lot to use manual focus. And then I just don't like the tiny. If you compare, like, here's the monitor of the camera and then here we have the... Uh, monitor external monitor so it's not that much bigger but it it has a difference it really uh helps a lot and then there's the video micro that's not the best microphone out there but it's cheap and it, it does it its job when attached to the camera i prefer to have a better audio system but that's that's what i use right now and the tripod is an old manfrotto Really good, I love it. Sturdy and uh, very solid. Uh, I would love to have a tripod which would allow me to uh, put the camera lower or a beanbag or something, but this is what I use.